I've seen a lot of home theaters in my day, but I have never seen a 9.1.5 Dolby Atmos setup. Heck, Dolby's own website doesn't even have a diagram depicting five Atmos channels. So what is LG up to with their new S95 QR soundbar system? Let's find out. The S95 QR, or S95 for short, is LG's flagship soundbar system for 2022, and it features a main bar, wireless subwoofer, and two wireless surround speakers that combine for a 9.1.5 Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and IMAX enhanced setup. The bar features three upward firing Dolby Atmos drivers, the third resting dead center, which is a first for me and maybe even the industry. It's the center mounted Atmos driver that gives the S95 its 0.5 designation. Moving beyond the LG's unique design, the system features 17 speakers, all of which are driven by a series of built-in amplifiers good for 810 watts of total system power. 810 watts is a bit more than the competition, specifically the Samsung 990B we just reviewed. Like most modern soundbars, the LG has additional HDMI inputs for plugging in sources like a Blu-ray player or gaming console. While gamers will enjoy VRR and ALLM support with the LG, the bar is limited to 4K60 signals. It does have ARC and EARC support and can pass through Dolby Vision and HDR10 signals as well. Of course, there is a host of wireless and smart streaming tech, including Google Assistant, Alexa, AirPlay 2, Bluetooth, and more. But for a complete breakdown of all of the features and app support, please check out our links in the description or in the pinned comment. Setting up the LG is pretty straightforward. If you've ever installed a soundbar before, there's nothing about the S95's installation that is going to seem out of the ordinary. We place the main bar below our Sony X95K and LG C2 OLED. I connected the bar to the TV's EARC enabled HDMI port using a high speed HDMI cable. Initially, I wanted to place the LG sub near the back of our room. However, with the sub placed around 15 feet away, it had problems staying synced with the bar. Moving the sub closer to the bar fix this problem. Nevertheless, for a wireless sub, at least in our experience, the range of the LG is not as good as the competition. And this issue of range was surprising because the two wireless surrounds had zero issues maintaining a connection with the rest of the system, and they were placed even further back of where I wanted the sub to originally sit. I am not entirely sure why the surrounds performed flawlessly from distances ranging from 12 to 15 feet from the main bar and almost 20 feet from one another when the sub couldn't even manage a distance of 10, but there you have it. Once placement was dialed in, I used the LG Soundbar app to get the system up and running. While using the app is not mandatory, it will make setup way easier. The display located on the Soundbar's face isn't exactly the easiest to read, nor is it the most responsive. However, inside the app, you can run LG's AI room calibration, dial in the individual speaker's volume to taste, and even carry out global tone control changes. In addition to switching inputs, selecting sound profiles, you get the idea. The app also enables you to connect the bar to your home's network. With everything connected, I queued up Top Gun Maverick and I hit play. And I immediately turned the LG down and then off because something was wrong. Our room is on the larger size, and that can be an issue when trying to evaluate smaller or maybe underpowered systems. And at first, I thought maybe this was the culprit because the sound out of the box was chesty, muffled, bass heavy, dare I say boomy, and the speakers distorted and clipped several times during my initial demo. I reset the system, reran LG's room correction procedure, grabbed my SPL meter, and hit play one more time, and no change. With peaks occasionally hitting 95 dB in our room with sustained volumes resting closer to the low to mid 80s, the LG simply didn't sound good. Before rushing to any judgments, we reached out to LG and had them send us another factory fresh unit because hey, sometimes things happen in shipping and even if a product looks perfectly fine on the outside, something could be damaged. Once the replacement arrived, I immediately set it up, paying very close attention to every detail and option within the LG app, being careful not to have any dynamic or auto volume aids engaged before hitting play. Satisfied everything was set up correctly, I hit play on Top Gun one more time, and, well, the performance didn't really change. So I grabbed my measurement gear and ran both bars through each and every sound profile in their default setting with and without room EQ engaged and discovered some pretty interesting traits. Fresh from the factory, in its standard profile, the S95 is pretty lumpy throughout the frequency range with a substantial drop off in the highs. This is no doubt why I found its initial sound to be bass heavy, distorted, 
and muffled. Going through each sound profile, you really are treated to a wide range of responses, none of which I would call accurate or neutral. Some are better than others, at least in terms of their measurements, with the best overall setting in our test being the Cinema Profile. It measured the closest to neutral while also sounding halfway decent for both music and movies. And if you're hoping for some improvements using LG's room correction, I didn't find many. Correction really only affects the bass frequencies, and in our room, that meant tuning the system for more bass. In almost every situation, given the lack of flexibility I had with respect to subwoofer placement and its signal stability, the sub needed to be turned down for best results. But time and time again, LG's room correction procedures sought to crank the bass up. And given LG's partnership with Meridian, a prominent high-end hi-fi brand, I was shocked at how bad the Meridian sound profile measured and sounded. Playing back our usual demo tracks, Ever Loving by Moby, Deja Vu by Lastlings, or Did Someone Make a Fool Out of You by Lady Blackbird, in its Meridian tune sound profile, the LG sounded decidedly monaural and vague. Vocals lacked presence and appreciable detail, never mind the fact that they sounded caged to the bar itself, with almost zero scale. Low mid-bass and bass overpowered everything. And as was the case with Everloving, making the track sound overly boomy. Switching the profile to LG's own AI sound profile, which is said to adjust itself based on the content being played, opened things up spatially, but overall, when it came to strict two-channel listening, the LG was just not very impressive. Now, there is a setting within the app that forces all incoming signals into a surround sound mode, and this setting works in conjunction with all of the sound profiles, including those specifically designed for two channels. Engaging this will create a greater sense of spaciousness, but it will also make everything sound like you are listening in an echo chamber or large music hall. Now, you can turn down the surround speakers, which will lessen this echo-like effect. Just know that there are no user-savable profiles. So, if you turn down the surrounds for music playback, you may have to remember to turn them back up when watching movies, which is annoying. But getting back to movies, the LG is pretty inconsistent. I found that it sounded best when fed a true Atmos soundtrack, as was the case with Top Gun Maverick or Bullet Train. When playing back Atmos content, I preferred the AI sound profile with some tweaks to the LG's individual speaker levels, mainly turning up the side and upward firing drivers while turning down the surrounds and sub. So long as I kept the volume from peaking above 90 dB or so, the sound improved. But for real dynamic snap and impact, I always felt as if I needed to turn things up. But any volume that produced peaks greater than 90 dB also produced distortion or clipping. When listening to non-Atmos encoded content, the LG is just too hit or miss for me. For starters, Atmos content is clearly being interpreted differently than non-Atmos content. So when switching between Atmos and non-Atmos programs, you may be jolted by a crazy volume shifts that occur. At a volume of say 22 out of 30, Atmos content was largely engaging and balanced in our room. But leaving the volume at 22 and switching to ESPN College Game Day resulted in an outright shouty sound, forcing us to frantically search for the remote to save our ears and the LG soundbar from itself. You can engage the dynamic volume aids to curb this, but doing so also softens the impact of the bar's entire presentation, resulting in a pretty pedestrian movie watching experience. And with regards to LG's Trick New Center mounted upward firing driver, I don't get it. I could not detect any real difference in the LG's vertical spaciousness when compared to bars like our 990B from Samsung that don't have the same driver layout. The upward firing center didn't make dialogue any clearer, nor did it seem to make the sound more focused on screen than without. Even turning it up to its max setting didn't help, leading me to believe that its presence is a little bit more of a marketing ploy than a functional one. While the LG S95 QR is a well-built and decent looking bar, its performance is way too finicky and requires way too much babysitting for it to be the simple solution I feel most soundbar customers are looking for. We even reached out to LG for comment on all of our findings and had planned to share their official responses with you all. But as of this taping, no one from LG has gotten back to us. If that changes following this review, I'll be sure to add the replies in the comments below. I don't really see the point in going into too much detail on which bars I think are better in comparison because the answer for me is going to be 
all of them. Christy will link to a few more suitable options, so check out the links in the description below. Obviously, if you have been on the fence over whether or not to get the LG or the Samsung Q990B, go with the Sammy. It's better and easier to live with day to day. We didn't experience any dropouts when testing the Samsung, but I know some folks have, so like with anything in tech, your mileage may vary. If you're still dead set on getting an LG soundbar, I would encourage you to look at the previous models, such as the SN11RG, that is if you can find one, or even the SP9YA, which is a solid option, but with less channels. And if you are in a smaller space and don't really need all of the channels and extra features, we really enjoyed our time with the Eclair. Now we review a lot of soundbars on this channel and I hate to say it, but the LG currently ranks among the bigger disappointments for me, which brings me no joy because I typically really like LG soundbars. I loved their prior generation, so I'm not sure what changed or why LG thought to even mess with what I would have called a winning formula. Alas, the S95 QR reviewed here ain't it. So that's it. That is now my take on LG's flagship soundbar system. But before we go, what do you think of it? Sorry, LG, I am not going to be able to save you on this one. But good news for DVLA, they are no longer alone in the running for worst soundbar of 2022. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happened, but it's not good. Yeah. It pains me to say it, but I didn't experience even one moment of enjoyable listening. Wow. It wow. was mostly a muffled mess, mm -hmm. and when it wasn't muffled, it was shrieking at you from all angles, talking about like when you push the signal into the... Into the surrounds? Yeah. Yeah, it is echoey. Uh, dialogue was completely unintelligible mm -hmm. and frankly ruined most of our TV and mo movie watching experience. At least for me, I could not understand anything. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I get it. A lot of shows today, movies today are mixed like... <laughs> but that that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. It was it just was horrible. I could not wait for you to get this soundbar off of our bench. Yeah. I um, know. I know. Uh I'm with you as far as you know, if you want to go with LG, which like you, we've historically really liked their soundbars and yeah. their products in general. Yeah. So I am completely baffled at what happened here. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm also frustrated that we couldn't get a response from LG, even though we gave them over a week to uh, get back yeah, to us. about a week, week and a half. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, and, and to be fair too, they have known that we have had issues with this bar for months because they've sent us a second one. Yeah. I mean, they and were so the, their, their PR company was, you know, helpful in getting us a new sound bar mm -hmm. uh, because we, we were concerned that maybe we had a you know, a lemon mm -hmm. in the, in the first one, which, you know, it happens. I completely do not understand what happened here. Mm -hmm. Um, if you could find the 11 RG, which we've reviewed, mm -hmm. um, I think it's still a really good alternative. Yeah. Um, but I think it's basically unavailable at this point. I mean, I had a really hard time finding any, uh, and I mean, seeing it's several years old at this point, Yeah, I think it's two years, two plus years old, you know, even if you can get one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would, uh, just yeah. because there's a lot of other options out there that are, are, are newer. Yeah. Um, that are going to be priced in the same ballpark. Yeah. That, you know, for me, it's difficult to just say, yeah, go buy the, go buy something three years old when you can get something just as good that's m newer and probably going to be supported. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, more into the future. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm with you. I would, I honestly would get anything else. Yeah. I, I, if anyone's like, Ooh, recommendation, I'd skip this one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I really would. It's, it's, it's baffling. Yeah. I, I don't know what more to say. Yeah. Uh, other than to, uh, go pick up the Q990B. <laughs> if you're looking for something along yeah. Along the exact same yeah, lines, I mean, you're even going to save some money. Yeah, they're very competitive. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think Samsung recently, excuse me, discounted the 990 B. Mm -hmm. So you can even save a, a couple more hundred dollars. I think since yeah, the, you since save we initially some money. reviewed it. Yeah, you get more channels. You get equal levels of adjustability. You just get a better. It's just a better it's just experience. A better product. It's a really, really fantastic soundbar, mm -hmm. and. Unfortunately, this particular LG only amplified how 
good that bar is. Yeah. All right. Well, that is now our review of the LG S95 QR soundbar. What'd you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. My question of the day for you is this. What do you think about that upward firing center mounted Atmos driver? When you saw that announced, were you like, ooh, cool? Or were you kind of like me going, how is that going to be used? I'm really curious. Uh, so please let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video.